Now, on this week's episode of the Jesse T Show, the amazing and powerful Jake Havron, professional health and success coach. Jake, thanks so much for being on the show, man. Excited to have you. Yeah, man. Excited to be here. Uh, you know, I heard a lot of good things about you and I'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking today, man. <laughs> Likewise, man. Well, the floor is yours. Uh, this show is to help, uh, you know, get your message out, get your brand out there. I know you're already doing a great job of that, but uh, any, any way that we can get you in front of more people, I think you're doing a great noble cause and I want to share that with the world. So a little bit about Jake Havron for those that uh, may not have heard of you yet. Yeah, so basically, um, thanks for the introduction. I appreciate it. So um, I actually live currently right now in Dana Point, California, but I grew up in, you know, Maui, Hawaii. I know, right, paradise. But uh, basically what I do is I'm a professional health and success coach, and I train traveling entrepreneurs, making their lives as simple as possible. I know how tough it is to try to get a busy life um, or a busy workplace and trying to be healthy, and so I just make your life easier. So that as I probably could say <laughs> that makes life a lot easy when you make it easy for other people. Um, and I think that, uh, you have such an amazing story. Um, you know, you did get a chance to grow up in, like you say, paradise. So what was that like growing up in Hawaii and some of the things that you experienced and some of the challenges there? Yeah, man. So growing up in Hawaii, people think that's like, you know, it's all paradise and everything. And, and for the people that probably can't see me, if they're just listening to audio, I'm six, six right now you know, fair skin, everything. But what happens is when you grow up in Hawaii like that, you get picked on a lot. You're called the, the Howie, right? So actually, people look at me now being the tall, fit dude, and like, oh, this guy was always like that. Well, it wasn't really that case. You know, uh, up to seventh, eighth grade, I was the chubby white kid. I was the one that would get picked on. You know, I played sports and all that, but I wasn't, I had no leadership or anything because I just didn't have that authority. And so I was like getting intense with sports and like sweating every single day, working out and I wasn't losing any weight. And I was just like, so like pissed off. I mean, it could have been the fact that I was eating cookie dough ice, you know, cookie dough ice cream every night, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll forget about that part. But what happened was it came to that point where you get that breaking point. And I was at, you know, summer of seventh grade. I was like, I need to search up like what to do because I'm sick of like not having this weight. So that's what I did. I searched up, you know, that was back then with like broadband and all that stuff where it's dial up and, and <laughs> you guys probably out. And uh, I found like a little like home band workouts, how to eat healthy. You know, back then they were saying how like, you know, soy was the best thing ever. So I'm eating soybeans, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I lost 40 pounds that, that, that month or that summer, which was like right two to three months. And that's where, when I came back to school, that's where people are like, what the heck? Like, you look amazing. You look fit. Like you're doing better on the court. And I was starting to find that significance because I was the youngest growing up too. I had an older brother and sister. And I got picked on a lot. So it was like, how do I defend myself? How do I get stronger? Even though we love each other and all that, there was still a lot of, you know, resistance at that time. And that's, that's kind of my journey on like where that health and success and, and just knowing that when you take care of your body, how that can play in the long run, even before I even was cognitive or consciously aware that that was what was happening, you know? Yeah, man. It's, it's incredible what the power of the mind can do. And that's something, you know, it'll be a narrative of our conversation. It sounds like, but to go as a younger person, um, you know, a lot of people, it seems like they find their fitness later on, like maybe in their twenties, thirties, sometimes a little bit younger, but to be that young and to drop that much weight, like I've dropped 25 pounds, uh, since January while adding muscle and like getting fitter and to 40 pounds is an incredible feat. And I, I'm, I can only imagine the looks on people's faces or the shock and awe when you came back into school, like such a stud, like the next, a few months later, like, who is this guy? They probably even know who you were. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was hard for them to recognize, you know, but it was, it was one of those things where it only came into fruition because I was so sick of it. And I was, I had enough, right. It, you get that breaking point inside you. Who you knows yeah. as a young kid, like you get that breaking point even nowadays. And I see this all the time with my clients where they're just like, you know what? Like I'm sick of having this spare tire. I'm sick of like, like not having the energy and they get that breaking point because you can be getting all the right th things and you can know all the knowledge, but if you don't have that mindset shift, that's not what's going to, it's not going to change at the end of the day. You might get temporary results, but that's what actually 
led for like a lifelong transformation of me being like, you know what? I know being healthy is priority. And I started to see the benefits more and more Then I started to add more muscle. It increased my ability to play basketball, which carried on and obviously into college, but it increased my social abilities, even though I was still kind of an awkward kid at that time. I was kind of like a late bloomer, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but it allowed me to just be, you know, work on one of the main, most important things, which is your health, your health. If you, if if you don't have health, you definitely don't have wealth and you don't have anything else that's going to be significant enough for change. So that's kind of where I, that was my little starting point right there in Maui growing up. Man. So there's so much to unpack there. And I think one of the things that I want to touch on is, um, when did you feel like enough was enough? I know, I know there are instances and moments and it could be the, you know, the girl didn't want to date you. It could be, you didn't make the team or you weren't happy with your position in life. I mean, like, was there one pinnacle moment or was it just adding up over time? Eventually it just said enough's enough. Yeah, it was, it was adding up over time for sure. I know a lot of people could probably relate with that right now. Even though we're talking about me as a kid, we can relate with that now. It was, it was adding up. It was me like not feeling confident in my body. Like I'd see all these other, like, you know, kids that when we had to take our shirt off for practice when they had abs and they were lean even though we're young it doesn't really matter at that point like i was still envious of that i was like man i'm like i'm uncom- like not confident to take my shirt off like that was big especially playing sports and we're doing like shirts for skins like that was like embarrassing you know but it was also seeing the girls that were attracted to the the young fit guys and i was more of like the one that was you know maybe the friendly guy but not the one that was getting the attention i wanted to so i was like man like even though i didn't get the ultimate results for that uh, it was nice to to see a little more attraction and people like talking about me it, it was just it was filling my ego at that time right now it's different but when you're in seventh grade or going into eighth grade that type of stuff is what can make or break a lot of people but it was that accumulation and then that that one night where i was just like why am I doing all this stuff? Like I'm literally dying at practice, sweating super hard, like working out every single day and I'm not seeing results. Like I'm not looking and feeling the way I want. And that's where that breaking point was. And I was like, I need to actually like stop wishing and start doing. So that's where that happened. You took back control of your health, your life. Uh, it, it became, you know, a huge part of how you operate today. And I think that the segue from once you took that control back and you, and you were able to perform better and even, even in your, uh, your passion and your love for a while with basketball, I mean, that was able to take you to places you were able to get a scholarship and so walk us through a little bit of how that brought you into like playing school, college ball. And, uh, you're, you're, one of the things you were studying there with nursing. Yeah. So, you know, I got a full scholarship to play college basketball and get my nursing degree. I went from, you know, beautiful beaches of North Dakota, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Hawaii, to the frigid lands of North Dakota. I don't oh want to get uh, So I actually, so people like were who asked me like, why you're crazy? Like, why are you doing that? And, you know, honestly, I didn't know. It was because of the scholarship um, that, you know, gave me free tuition and everything, but it was definitely one of those things where you look back hindsight, you're like, you know what? I know why I went to that school. It's an amazing school, University of Jamestown, uh, great nursing program, great basketball team. Like we were very successful, but it's North Dakota. And I was like, you know what? I went there because it kept me on track and kept me on pace. There was no too many external stimulations. So it was a blessing in disguise, even though it was a rough four years, but yeah, I played basketball all four years. Um, got my nursing degree, you know, so I became a nurse, but even, you know, that's where I was, even in that college times, that's, that's where I was still finding my way. I still noticed how I didn't have that leadership role that, you know, what I do now is completely different. I'm able to lead people and transform in their lives and, and inspiring them to greatness from as you know, young as 17 years old, actually 14 years old, I worked with a 14 year old, all the way up to like 68 plus, you know, years old. And but it's crazy because if I was going to look back when I was in college and look at what I was doing right now to this current moment, I would have been like, that's impossible because I wouldn't even be able to be a proper leader on my own team. You know, I just lack that ability. But I say that to only inspire is where you're sitting at right now. It's like, you know what? If you don't have those abilities, it doesn't mean that you're never going to have them. You just got to work for them. And that's what we'll get into of like how I did that and what I implemented. But that was kind of my comments. Like it was a struggle going through college. Um, you know, very, very honored to have that. But I mean, it's, uh, that's kind of like where I went with the basketball career. 
So you, you obviously found your fitness and you, you keep evolving over time. Like you just learning and educating and you had this caretaker inside of you following down the nursing path. And that allows you to be a leader and a caretaker now of people. I mean, you, you have to take care of your clients because, um, they're everything for your business without a service. If you're in a service-based business without clients, what's the point, right? So it sounds like you have put the, the best of both worlds together with that caretaker, that caring, that educating, that leadership with the fitness and the health and success business. How is that transition for you to go from college and learning about yourself and developing and growing to starting your company? Like, what did that look like for you? Any, any starting off the blocks, how that felt and kind of the very, transition into what you do today? Yeah, great question. So um, I always loved the health and fitness, obviously, since when I had my transition. So I was like, I want to always get in, like, I wanted my passion to be what I'm doing now, but I had no idea that that was possible. And I thought it wasn't possible. So I was like, I wanted to get into exercise physiology to become like a trainer, but that wasn't known as the, the, the well-paying job. So my, nurse, my sister was actually in, in the process of coming there. told me, hey, you're a nursing. You, that's a path. You can go to the uh, income, stable jobs. You can find a way. So I got into nursing. I loved it. It was amazing. But right around senior year was when I started to really realize, I was like, if I want to like live this aligned life of being able to stay healthy and fit, most times nurses are the most unhealthy because of the crazy work schedules that have to work. I was like, there's no way I could get in consistent workouts and proper nutrition and sleep and recovery when I'm doing night shifts, like three nights in a row. You don't have to just or reacclimate to the day shifts. And it just, it just, it was crazy. And I was like, and plus two, I would have these people that would come in with like heart attacks and these life threatening illness, all these things that are most likely because of their their habits and you would think that would be the red flag to change your life and so you here you are helping them you save your life you call them the right setup and then what happens is a month later they come back in with the same problem because their mind shift, their mindset wasn't shifting right no matter what was happening no matter how many people were giving the right answer it's until you fix this up here that won't change so that's where i had a paradigm shift i was like you know what i'm gonna pursue instead of getting people out of the hospital i'm gonna keep people out of the hospital and that's where this came. And I was like, I'm going to pursue this passion of, of being a trainer. And that's where my whole entrepreneurial system started. Um, and I was leaving a, a sustainable, like $70,000 a year job and going into something that was, first of all, if I was going in person training, making around, you know, let's say 30 grand a year at most, that's what was the, the typical. And people thought I was crazy. They were saying, I'm, I'm, that's stupid. Like, what are you doing? You have this degree. You have all these things you work for for four years. But I knew I had a purpose bigger than that. That's where I started my entrepreneurship. Man, it's, uh, you know, we talked about before jumping on the show, like uh, jumping without a parachute or breaking comfort zones. A lot of entrepreneurs have to go through these, uh, you know, trials and tribulations and, and make it. And so there are people that are in the concept phase. They have an idea that, uh, the people that are listening to the show have an idea of like, maybe they're working at corporate now or they have a nine to five, but that's not their passion or not their calling. And they have something in their mind they want to accomplish, but don't quite know how. And then there's those that are startups where they've just started and they're kind of facing challenges and they're excited, but there's a roller coaster ride. And so one day they're up, one day they're down. And then the, there's those that are the seasoned business uh, entrepreneurs and people that, um, that are, they've built a business, but they still have their own kinds of challenges and they're just different demands. And so, um, Tell us a little bit about your journey as you stepped from the known and from the comfort zone of 70 K a year, uh, being in a profession that like pretty much from what I know, being in the market here in Georgia, uh, there's a lot of different opportunities for nursing and, and, and nurses in general. So there's always, it seems like there's always a job if you want one. Um, and so how did that feel leaving that and then going off into the unknown and what did you do your first like year or so in business? How did that look? Yeah, so kind of paint a picture. Think about this. So I'm getting out of college, right? I'm 22. I'm getting into this industry that I have a passion for, but it is oversaturated, right? There's every single type of finisher. My ideal job was to be anywhere in the world training people online. So I wasn't trading time for money more. I was trading service for money, right? I was able to live my life, but be able to transform people's other lives and, and make a great living. And so here I am, 22 years old in the saturated business just graduated a nursing degree and i was like how is this even possible it's 
it's scary, right? But with enough purpose and enough passion, you'll surpass those, those fears and you'll take that first step. Because that first step causes momentum, but that first step is the hardest. And that first step doesn't always be sense, right? You're, the way I look at life and my, my own journey of how it was, it's not big points in the road that cause you know, life or death, you know, that's the day. It's those little points in the road that go somewhere to your success, some will lead back. But just because you do one bad step, you could go way back onto the right path. So that's right. I was starting to take those steps that led me into, so what happened after college was, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take a break. I'm still kind of feeling out if I want to do nursing, um, but I want to pursue my passion. So I was like, I'm going to go do a bodybuilding competition, right? So that was my first That was my first step. I did physique competition. I was like, I just want to work on me. I've been in team sports my whole life. I've always loved fitness. I'd be the guy like lifting in the weight room the night before a basketball game, and people would see me be like, don't you have like a game tomorrow? Like, a game. I was like, yeah, I, I play better when I lift. Like, I'm doing like leg workouts and stuff, and I'm like, that's crazy. But then I'm on the court and people like the other team will be like looking at me and be like, holy crap, dude, like, like you look like a football player. I'm like, yeah, you better be, you better be watching yourself. And so, I was, right? so I'm playing against guys that are 6'10", bigger. So I had to be stronger. I had to be more resilient. I had to be the leader on the team. So that was the reason. But so I got bodybuilding, working on myself. And from that one step of just, you know, kind of just pursuing my passion already, I did well in the bodybuilding competition. I, and the next big step, and I talked about this um, in, a, in my, my story, is that I made that separation on my Instagram where I was like, I want to make a, a, a fitness-specific Instagram outside of my personal one because I want to post stuff that's inspiring people, only people that want to see that will follow it. So what happened, people, I started to post my journey, post my success, and I had people reaching out that was like, Hey, do you do uh, online training? I live in like Arizona. I live here in Hawaii. I was in Hawaii. I was like, yeah, I do. Even though I didn't, right? But I, that was my step to be like, you know what? I got to go get certified. I got to figure out these plans because this is number step number one to getting where I want to be. Sure. So I started training people online, like here and there, and I had this personal training cert. You know, did my bodybuilding competition, still sitting on the nursing. But I was like, you know what? Like, I might as well like one gym that I could start training at since I have that certification. So I became an in-person trainer January 1st, 2018. Oh, wow. And things just like blew up where I was every day on my half hour drive to work. I'm listening to podcasts like how to be a better salesman because I have to go in there and sell my own packages and I have to go and be relatable when I was coming from nursing where nursing and everyone's just, the clients are just handed to you and you just do your task list. So that's where that all started. And that was those steps. And we'll, we'll dive into exactly how that, you know, uh, came into fruition of becoming an entrepreneur and full-time online and helping more and more people. But what I want to really have this resonate with the people watching and listening right now is that no matter what situation, you are like you said, there's entrepreneurs that have started, they have a concept of people that are hard in that part where they're taking those steps. The people that are have been doing like their, their business or their nine to five job for their whole life. And like, what do I do next? It's that step that causes momentum. And the best way I like to describe that is is an actual example of what uh, Tony Robbins does, where I just went to his first event, which is Unleash the Power Within a month ago. And on the first night, over 10,000 people, he does the thing called fire walking. Literally walk across the holes. And it's like, that's what he's known for. And I was like, what is this? Like, I was like, like, is this actually real cold? What not? Like, I was like, you know, <laughs> if you prepared for like three hours for this whole fire walk, it's like a 14 foot long walk. And what it really resembled to me is obviously for a lot of people, it's like, if you walk on fire, like, but really what it is, is it's taking that first step because that first step to get onto like, 2200 degree coals and they're like shoveling them they're glowing and everything it, it's legit is that's the hardest thing because that's the most scary because it's out of your comfort zone but what he says is out of all the millions of people that took that step and put their foot on that coal not one single person stood there and was like hmm, maybe i should just sit here and and contemplate what i'm doing no they freaking Keep going and take the next step, next step, because it builds momentum and it gets them by the, by the end of it. They're at the end of the other side and they're like, holy crap, I just made the whole walk. Right? But the hardest part is to get yourself in a state where, you know what, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it might not be the best situation, I was leaving 70K a year, uh, four years of being in college 
to go to a place that I had no certainty of even making an income, that was a hard first step, but that built that momentum. And we'll dive into that here. But I just wanted to share that, that just, just you got to make those moves. It's huge. And, uh, you know, Tony Robbins, he's, uh, he's a gift to the world, man. He's, he's, he's his enthusiasm, his experience, uh, his, his ability to, to, to motivate and, and emulate like, like uh, role model the way to be successful. And, uh, you're right. Momentum is everything. And it's, you either have a tailwind of momentum pushing you or you have a headwind put, put headwind pushing against you. And I think that, both serve their purpose. Uh, not everything's supposed to be easy. You only grow with friction. Like you have to, you want to build muscles, you got to work out, you got to break muscles down, you got to build them back up. And there's this whole process that goes behind it. But another piece that stuck out to me is something that I do myself is, um, I have a lot of a travel time. My office to my home is about 30 minutes to so do that twice. And I'll do uh, audio books and depending on what I want to get better in. Um, so there's this, concept of being your own mechanic, you know, you needed to get better at sales because you didn't have that experience. Um, then there's also the concept of having a mentor, whether it's someone you listen to on a podcast, YouTube university, thought leaders, um, yourself being a coach and a mentor to your clients. So what were some of those learnings and some of those books, those audiobooks that impacted you uh, one way or another, that kind of like made you have aha moments, whether it was sales management, any of these things. Yeah, so the, the two podcasts that I primarily listened to from the beginning was uh, Andy Priscilla, who I still listen to this day because he was the truth and just very straightforward about how to be a successful businessman and not be the entrepreneurs that say they want it but don't don't actually act on it. So that actually opened my eyes right away from the start where there was no sugar coating. And that allowed me how to over deliver, bring massive value and actually be straightforward with what I do. So people would respect that. Cause I'm this young kid coming into the world. Everyone's trying to be an entrepreneur now is like, how do I stand out? Another one was Ed Milet. Ed Milet, I think is he, t- he shares amazing stories. He's so powerful in his own, in his own testimonies, but he's so good with the mind and the mindset where I was learning how to just be that person. Right. And, and, um, and then now I'm, you know, extremely grateful for getting in the inner circles of Tony Robbins, because what I love about Tony Robbins is he's not a, a positive thinker. He's an intelligent thinker, right? And that's what I bring into my, my coaching, especially with working with these busy traveling entrepreneurs that travel the world and they don't have time to work out five times a week, two hours. Like, yes, that'd be ideal for a bodybuilder or someone that wants a really good physique, but that's not intelligent thinking. Intelligent thinking is making plans very specific for you, not giving you cookie cutter crap. That's actually getting your results and getting my business more successful because you're becoming more compliant, you get more results, and you're loving the process and not getting overworked. That's intelligence, right? So learning that. Uh, and dude, honestly, like audiobooks, so or podcasts have been my favorite because I kind of like I wasn't into reading. And I know a lot of us can probably relate with that. And I got scarred having to read like all these long books and you know, history class and, and literature and all that stuff. So it was so hard for me to open a book. But when I got to a podcast, even though I was a podcast, it's like, oh, this is so boring. But I find people like that. I was like, this is amazing. This is straight content. This isn't like them like babbling on random stuff. And that's where I, I want to be here today to actually like just give you massive value of what you're listening to. Uh, but then one of like the first books that I dove into, which was kind of recently, was How to Win Friends and Influence People. Amazing. Dale Carnegie. Amazing. Carnegie and I really recommend it, no matter where you are right now, if you never read it, read it because that allowed me to how, how to provide and actually listen to people and give them massive value. Cause especially with me being a coach, because what I see a lot of times when people, when they try to be a guide is they, instead they just try to be the hero. They try to be that person. that's like, hey, I just, I want to talk about my story because I did this and this and this. Yes. Yeah. You can get a little ego boost from that, but no one's going to want to learn about that because everyone learns their own. They're, they're living their own superhero story. That's right. right. When you actually learn how to listen and bring real value and how to bring them significance, that's how it doesn't matter if I'm 24 years old and just out of college, I'm able to work with some of the most wealthiest and successful people and entrepreneurs because I know how to provide value for them. Even though I'm not making, you know, millions and millions of dollars yet, like they are, they can still find value in what I do because I'm listening to where their needs are. And that's how you make massive change in people's lives. 
Well, listen, there's, there's supernovas. There's people, there, there are people that go out there and, and uh, they, they create such a positive change. And like you said, add so much value. And it all starts with the, the picture I have behind me. It's a, it's a little goldfish with a shark fin on top of it. And it says mindset because it's like the little fish that could, like they think that they're going to do big things. And it really starts with you believing in yourself and getting all this education. And it doesn't matter, uh, you know, if someone's making millions of dollars a year. And this is my world as a financial planner. Everybody still needs advice, right? Everybody still needs, uh, there's always someone who's a level ahead of you. And I think that um, regardless of how long you've been in business uh, doing what you're doing, what you do resonates with your clientele because they're the same type of people that are listening to Ed Milet. They're listening to, um, you know, Andy Seller and they're listening to Tony Robbins. And because you're on the same wavelength and you're talking the same things, but you do have probably, I'd imagine 15 years, give or take of personal fitness and, and working on yourself, like that stuff translates to those types of clients. And that's probably why you've done so well. You're crushing it on Instagram. Last time I looked, you had like 90,000 followers. I'm sure you're doing really well on, uh, in your business. And I think that those things go without saying it is who you are and you've done a really good job. And so just a quick question to tie back real to Andy Frisella. Have you tried the 75 hard? Have you done the two work? No, no, no. So okay. <laughs> I haven't yet. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen it. My good friends, like, like uh, Nick Stanton and staff. So he's another motivational speaker and his crew, they do 75 hard. And I mean, if Nick who doesn't have legs and only has one arm and he speaks for Tony Robbins, and all this stuff, I'm, I'm sure most of you seen as like crazy workout videos. I mean, you can do 75 hard. And I see, yeah, I mean, I follow him and I'm like seeing these motivations and, you know, they were just at my house a couple of weeks ago uh, for one of the events and to see him working out, like, I was like if this guy could do 75 hard and damn right. I could do 75 hard too. <laughs> I look at it, man. It's, it's tantalizing. Um, I just, you know, I just haven't put myself to it. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, you, you, you talked about someone with real challenges and real, um, I guess, a uh, negative situation. If you look at it that way with not having full mobility of your body. And this is something you've learned a lot more about, and you've really delved into this world because you made a beautiful connection with uh, Miss Wheelchair Hawaii, if I'm saying that correctly. Can you talk yes. about that relationship and what that's done for you and your life and her life and, the, and, and the, your clients' lives? Yeah. So this was actually back when I was still in, in person trainers, actually my third month I started. So right around March. So very new at this, right. But it's because I was taking these steps and you know, it, as an entrepreneur, you hear from these guys like Andy, I remember like Andy was talking about like, you can either take the hard road, which will lead to the most results or take the road that you know, significance. And so this day came where, you know, I was at my trainer desk and here comes Sarah Foley, you know, Miss, she came ready for Miss Wheelchair Hawaii basically. And she had an accident seven years ago. She was in Utah, ATV accident, you know, tumbled down a cliff, like, you know, like snapped her spine basically. And, and it's paralyzed from the mid waist down. So here she comes in in a wheelchair, beautiful woman, you know, young, vibrant, but you could tell that, I mean, if you compare her to when she is then to now, like it's just game changer and you can see those results, but on my Instagram, but she came in looking for a trainer. She was like, I got to get ready for this event. I'm going to, it's my, First time being Miss Wheelchair Hawaii, they wanted me. They loved my blah 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 blah, and they were like, "I need." His, she was like, "I need like a, a fit trainer that could like you know if I need, they need to pick me up or whatnot." Like I have more experience with this, but I need someone. And so I hear this opportunity, and I had two choices: right, the fork in the road. I didn't know the long term outcomes, but you got to know what can come from it. And I was like, "Look, I could." take this step and, and never work with a person with disability. I have my nursing background. I understand the body, I understand the mind muscle connection, all these things and, and change her life. But also it can lead into where it's led into now, uh, which I didn't even see that being a possibility or I could be a creative, like, you know what? That's not my qualities. Um, I've never done that before. I'll give that to someone maybe that's in that area, which there was no one, but I could have just had my limiting beliefs pulled me back from something amazing. And I took that route. So I went and talked to her. We, we got started. I told her the first couple of days, we're just going to make things happen. I'm going to see how your body works, how, what we can and do. And she was like, I'm all game. And basically long term short, we were just documenting her story. She has a big following of people with some sort of disability that also follows her just because she's such an inspiration. And they saw her stomach losing fat, her legs even increasing in size when she couldn't even use them, her arms and chest. She's able to do pull ups. She was, when she first started, to give you an example, she couldn't even hold her arms in front of her because her core was non existent because of the paralyzation. So she would fall over. 
So we had to train that muscle connection of teaching her what to feel, how to feel, even though she can't feel as well as where she would hold one arm out and brace herself. And when that's so easy, it'd be two arms. And then holding the weight and doing that was just one exercise. And that was that progression. And you can see the results. And um, I'm sure you might have seen them already from week one to week 12. I show every person that either is not in a wheelchair or is, and their mind is blown. And what that is to show you, you know, just to, and that, what, what that led into actually is, is to make an online training program for people with disabilities all over the world or some sort of limit. And that was something that I would have never expected, but she had hundreds of people DMing her, like, seeing her transformation, like, what did you eat? What did you do? Like, how did you, how's that possible? How are you even in the gym? Like, and she was trying to answer them. And I was like, look, Sarah, like, I'm getting into the online training at that time. I was like, we need to just make a program unique for these people and serve them. And we started replicating these results with people that lived in Michigan and Maryland, all these other areas that we don't even see them, but because they're doing the things that we learn, we're not transforming their lives. And it was just an incredible thing. And now we have a whole new retreat that's coming on in the end of September with like a documentary that's happening that follow these women lives that are getting trained by me getting holistic healing nutrition work the whole retreat and that's just from one instance of taking that step and saying i want to be your trainer right so you're listening right now i want this to be inspiration to say that you know what you don't know what the future holds but what the future doesn't hold is the, the things that you don't the action those could be the things that you know one day and that my lab brings this up and this is something I really want everyone to listen to and really take in is that one day you're going to be standing, you know, at, at the end times, uh, you know, in front, of, in front of God, in front of, you know, whatever you believe in, I'm Christian, so I believe in God. And, and, and you're going to look at yourself, right? The person who you were meant to be. And Ed explains this so well. He's like, you know what? This is going to be either what hell looks like or what heaven looks like. And, and you're going to see this person. And either they're going to look just like you and you're going to recognize them or they're going to be a complete stranger because that's the person you could have been if you lived up to your potential, your true self. And that's going to be the worst feeling ever if you could see who you could have been by taking those right actions and not let your fear hold you back. And that's going to be either where you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so fulfilled. Why? Right? Because our two things that we want in this world are, are growth and contribution which leads to fulfillment. So you're going to be like, man, I could have done that. Now I feel just terrible right so that's why why i promote this idea of just taking action don't let your fears hold you back yes there will be failures but it's only failure if you let it fail you you know if not it's just a learning experience yeah. so that's, that's kind of my little story on that. i don't know what kind of far off that but no it's what you're here for and it's it's sharing your journey and those of other people that you've impacted have impacted you and so number one noble effort goes back to your caretaking uh as a nurse your training to be able to give a crap about somebody else and go the extra mile for them. And, um, there's so much there that I want to touch on. So the first one is you, you, you kind of, to go from the, the end of your conversation, kind of back a little bit, you talk about how, um, Ed says that when you go to heaven, uh, hopefully that's where you're going, you can see two versions of yourself, right? You see, um, the person that you could have been and the person that you are, and you want to be the person that you could have been like, you live up to your potential, so to speak. And I heard this from even David Goggins. I'm really big into David Goggins. And, um, he is one of the most unbelievable accomplishments of what the human mind is capable of. Um, and so he said something very similar. He's like, when you get to heaven, you want to see, like God's going to show you what you could have been. And you want to live up to that, that bill, so to speak. He's like, you could be one person. Let's say he didn't live up. He was like, let, he uses this analogy. He used to spray for cockroaches. He was 300 pounds. He was uh, eating all sorts of junk food. He was a lazy bum. Now he's Navy SEAL, uh, Army Ranger, Air Force Tac P, ultra runner, uh, does all these great things to raise money for Navy SEAL Foundation. And like, imagine going to heaven and seeing those two people and what you could have been. And that's not who you are. Right. And so I think that that's a huge, huge, huge um, way to look at how you operate your business, how you operate your life, how you operate, operate your relationships. So I think that's a huge point. And then the second piece about Ed Milet was huge was it helped me. Um, entrepreneurship, as much as I'm in a, a people facing business and I deal with a, a network of, of a lot of great people from centers of influence to uh, partners that help me with my business. Sometimes it gets really lonely. There's times where entrepreneurship can get lonely in one sense. And so there is times where you got to make sure that you are coaching yourself through that. Ed Milet helped me with a piece 
talking about uh, stacking gratitude. I don't know if you've heard this before, but he was on Impact Theory, Tom Billu's show, and he was talking about how um, even if it's the little things, I woke up today, I'm alive, I'm healthy if you're healthy. And if you're not, be thankful for the little things that are in your life. And if you can start stacking gratitude one on top of the other, that's how you get out of any funks you might be as an entrepreneur. And I think that was a huge piece I took from him at one point in my life. Um, and then the other thing that I want to talk about as well is you're a coach, you're a mentor, you're a leader, but to be those things and to be an effective one, you have to be an even better student. And that's why you're always learning and growing and evolving. What were some of the things that you learned from this initial, I guess, two or three day uh, assessment of um, Miss Wheelchair Hawaii? Like, what did she teach you? What has she taught you, educated you on? Like, what are some of your takeaways from that, that situation? Yeah, that's a great, great question on that. And to think back, uh, when I saw her and worked with her, it's like, truly it came to that point where I, I, I knew a lot already by the, the, the human body. And, you know, if someone comes in and going to train with them or someone applies to my academy now, since I'm all online now, um, I was like, all right, I know what to do. Like, I know what you got, like, I'm going to listen to what you got. But with her, it, it opened my idea or my mind up of like how I actually need to tailor things specific to her. Right. Because a lot of times nowadays, especially in the coaching or the health and fitness, a lot of things are cookie cutter, right? Because people try to save time or they don't actually have a full time job where they could actually spend intimate coaching with you and they give you some like random workout plan that only makes you feel overwhelmed and not able to finish it or when you're traveling it's impossible to follow. So yeah. with her that kind of inspired that where like I need to actually like look at her, actually see what she can and can't do her abilities, how many times she can come into the gym. And that's what allowed me to make real results rapidly for her. When you see that one week, one week of transformation, it is insane because of the results that we did that was tailored to her. A lot of people with wheelchairs and wheelchairs, they get a thing called a wheelchair because they're sitting a lot, they lose all the core tone and shrinks, but they, their stomach just like protrudes out. It's not all fat, it looks like it, but it's just because everything is relaxed. So we had to train those muscles, not only to just burn that fat in that area, but to tighten them up. So not only is her posture getting good, not only is her spine getting healthy, you're getting a win-win there, but you're actually getting that, that aesthetic look. So now she feels confident in a bikini when she would never wear a bikini before. She feels confident working out in like those, those um, you know, workout shirts. And that's just like what I replicate now in my day or today where I do full-time online work with people all around the nation is listening to what they actually want. And this is something that to take away in your own business is don't think you know it, right? And you're always going to be learning just like how I, every day I'm le learning the podcast, I'm reading new books because the day you stop investing is the day your clients stop investing in you, yeah. right? You, you can stop and learning. I mean, even the most successful people like, uh, like Tony Robbins himself or Bill Gates or, you know, all these, like, it doesn't, you know, wealth doesn't mean success, but even them have, they have mentors. They have, people. you know, Tony Robbins is worth around, you know, around half a billion right now. He's having billion, billionaire mentors trying to get him to a billionaire success, right? Just because he's at that point where you wish you could be there, it doesn't mean you stop. You know, so it's the same thing with each one of you, no matter what area you want to be in is how can you properly invest with the right coach, you know, with the right, just like where you're putting your mind space, you know, stop, stop listening to music every single day you drive and in your mind and actually get your mind productive with listening to the audio books. Simple as that. Or, uh, you know, stop like, uh, instead, of, instead of sabotaging yourself and, and you know, stress eating, and even though it feels good at that moment, you're you're relieving your your temporary needs. The next day, you feel bloated, you feel low energy, you feel crap. And in the long run, that's just affecting the amount of money you can make and the amount of change. Because now you're not going to be as confident to go get that promotion or as energetic to go and and do those projects that need to get done. So realize where that, that negative space is happening and start take that first step. Because the hardest thing to do is to rewire your brain on the initial rewiring. But once you create that pattern and reinforce it with something new, it becomes repetition. You go, like, wow, like this is like chill now. Like I told my clients the first week of implementing their workouts that are into their their, their work plan, it might feel a little discomfort. It might feel uncomfortable because it's not, it's not used to it. But by day eight, 
you're like, wow, this is getting repetitive. Like, I like this. This is something I could do. I, I look forward to waking up and working. I look forward to eating the healthy food because I feel the energy. So that's what I'm trying to say is that just start making those small switches to always invest in your health, always invest in your mindset, invest in accountability that gets you on the learning curve of getting above everything that's been going through the muddy path of life, you know? Best investment you can make is in yourself. And that's uh, Warren Buffett, who happens to be one of Bill Gates' mentors to bring that back around. So um, love love that um, concept of making your, your life better and, and your health, uh, which is your wealth. I mean, if you don't have your health, what's the point? And this is why I coach my clients on. This is why I'm a little bit of a like disruptor or go against the status quo as a financial advisor, investment, investment manager is I want my clients to live their lives. Well, today, I don't want them to wait till they're 65 and retired because God forbid, they're not going to be nearly as healthy and they're not going to have nearly as much time. And that's the one thing that we don't get any more of this time. So if you can do things to amplify your impact or, or uh, make it more meaningful in relationships or business in things that you just, it comes down to control, getting up early, working out, training, the right nutrition, the right coach and success person like your team, the mentors you want to surround yourself with. I think that success leaves clues and, and you've just nailed a bunch of them in your conversation piece of, of following those routines and having those protocols in place. And so when you look at your business and you're coming up, believe it or not, by the end of this year, it's going to be the end. Uh, it's going to be two years, right? It's going to be two years of from January 18th to January, 2020, which is crazy to say that out loud, right? 2020. Um, what has evolved in your business in terms of what are you doing for your clients? Um, how are you helping them with their programming? I keep hearing you talk about anywhere from like week one to week 12, is it a 12 week program? And like, how does it work with the relationship? How do they check in with you? Talk a little bit about your process and like where the business has evolved to, to this point. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, when you think about that, just two years, I really want to break this, this idea and mindset of, you need to have a business for five, ten years to be successful or to have impact, right? But like I'm like you said, I'm I'm disrupting this because and there's a lot of people now disrupting with their business that come out and blow up and are the game changers, you know? And I'm sure we, you could list off a lot of these companies that would just blow up and out of nowhere. And that's the same thing as I don't want anything to think that you have to keep going or you're not mature enough in your business to have impact, right? I'm coming up on two years now. Actually, it was November of 2018 when I became a full-time online trainer because that's when I was like, you know what? I started going to, um, I went to my first event, my first like uh, self-development event, which was Lewis House Summit of Greatness. And that yep. was in October. And I met this, this woman there in line that was telling me about how she had this mentor that was in Lewis's inner circle and he coaches online trainers to become successful and bring what they know in person online so you can train anyone. And I was like, you know what? That's exactly what I want. I didn't know what it meant to actually have a real mentor or coach, but I was interested. And so I got to that point where I was able to invest in them. And I was like, this is the point where I, like, I know there's a lot of crap out there. It seemed really good, but you just never know. But I took that step because I trusted my own passion, my own purpose. I was like, I will make the most of it no matter what. And it was the best thing I've ever done. And it's allowed me to go from in person to online. It allows me to train people internationally. And it's allowed me to take my passion to do all the things I am now because I was investing in my mentor. So that was actually something I remember. But now 2020 comes around, and from November to where we are right now, which is middle of August 2019, the amount of happened here is unreal. Because most people, as they say, overestimate what they could do in a month, but underestimate what they can do in a year. Yeah. From meeting, going to all these events, being able to travel the, world, uh, the nation and, and make connections and collaborations and, and move to Dana Point, California, which I currently live now, which... I, it was one of my dreams to like, like live in this area because it's a nice area. So the connection that's made. We're now partnering in the platinum of, of Tony Robbins, where I'm only 24 years old. And I'm working with these wealthy, successful people where they want to have me be the coach because I could provide them some help. So I'm not saying to impress on the listeners right now or to impress the listeners, but I'm, I'm saying to impress on you that don't let time be. Time is just relative to the amount of action and value you can bring. 
you know, there's a lot of businesses that have been around for 50 plus years, or even let's say 10 years, but they don't bring massive value because they let that, you know, they were inefficient with that time. So if you can do that, it can make massive changes in your life. And it just takes those, those simple action steps, you know? Now, the reason, and this is a big thing I love bringing a big point on truth related with this, Jesse, is that, is that when I tell these things like, hey, you should do this, that, and, and, and you know what, you need to think and affirmation and all that. I don't say that to me, just hate the people that told me that. I say that because that's actually what caused my life to transform. And I feel like that's quite powerful. So I know listening right now that you want to be inspirational to someone, you want to be a coach, or you want to start your own business, and you want to probably be a leader. Let that be the thing that you funnel through to your people, but manipulate it in a way where it's your story that is what used those words of advice and affirmations. Because that people just don't think that you're just repeating it, but you're actually living it. And that's how you become a powerful leader. And that's how I was able to go from the guy that was barely a captain on my senior year of college basketball team, now leading all these people in their lives for transformation, for getting them through their divorces, helping them, you know, successful business people, getting them the bodies they never thought of because I was actually able to live it. And I was able to actually able to be that representation that they were like, if Jay could do it, and this is my coach, I can make this people. And that's where you provide massive value. Man, and, and it comes through, you exude it. Uh, it's authentic, it's genuine, uh, it's real, it's likable. Like one of the very first cognitive biases is likability. You're gonna like someone that you work with, right? And so in that working with, it's a partnership. It's a partnership with you and your and your students, or I don't know how you call them, your clients, your students, but basically it's a partnership and you wanna make sure it's a good partnership on both sides. So in that vein of uh, meeting new potential people to change each other's lives, they change yours, you change theirs. Um, are you taking on new clients and, and, and how do they um, work with you online? Like, so what does that look like? And, and maybe just a little brief overview. And um, do you even have the capacity anymore? I mean, cause you're, you're, you're growing at such a rapid rate. Um, are you able to take on new clients? And what does that look like? Yeah. Great question on that. Uh, so yes, we are taking on new clients, but one of the big things that we do too, is we don't take on anyone and that's not to make us sound like we're better than anyone else or whatnot. But we actually have a whole application process because we want to make sure we, we make our own inner circle of these people. We're obviously we're working with you, my team, and I, one on one. But we have the inner circle of the community of everyone else in our academy, where we make sure that that's the, the lead class, right? Because if you come in and you're expecting the best, but we're accepting anyone and everyone, then you're not going to get the, the the positive feedback. You're not going to get the right energy, the right type of people in there. They're not going to just be askers, but not givers. So we have a process to make sure this is the best fit for you. And also because if we're going to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, we want to make sure that you're ready to go because we're the ones that actually accelerate your life. So if you're ready to go, you're ready to get the body that you want, you want to make this easier, then that's where we will step in. And, and you'll find me on uh, Instagram is my main page, as you mentioned, or I do have Facebook if you don't have Instagram, but it's at Jay Cavron, J-A-K-E-H-A-V-R-O-N. And then my you know, my uh, caption there has the application so we can get on a phone call and just, you know, kind of qualify and see if this would be the right fit for you. Because we don't want to waste your time. You know, we don't want to waste your money. We don't want to waste our own time. So we're just, we're getting the coaches that you, you need, not the coaches you want. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of like what we do. And we, we tailor and specifically work with entrepreneurs, especially the traveling ones. And we just give you your dream bodies in life the simplest way possible. That's as, that's as simple as we can explain it. So, wow. So, you, you know, there's, um, exclusivity is, is one of those things where it's, it's not a bad thing. I mean, you want to have this tribe, you want to have this like-minded of achieving and growing and learning and humble being humble, because when you're learning something, you have to be humble to know that you don't know it all. Right. And so I think that you're building that kind of exclusivity, which is a good thing. I mean, you look at some of the best brands in the world and that's kind of what they offer. And that's, that's how I operate my business. So, um, you know, I opened up a, a financial plan. I was a state farm agent years ago and, uh, you know, they do some fi financial planning there, some insurance work. I broke away from that to do Tedesco financial, which was actually February of 2017. So pretty close to the same time of year, just a year before you started yours right around that time. And, um, when I was getting into that independent, uh, financial planning side, you know, I didn't have my target market quite set yet. I knew kind of what I wanted to do, but like I hadn't whittled it down yet. And then now after two years of Tedisco financial and, and making that hyper focus and hyper local, like to what I want to actually work with, 
we opened up 46 and two wealth partners, which is the company that I run now. Uh, it's an investment management company and we have an exact person that we want to work with. We have an exact, we'll help anybody in, in a sense of, um, just being a good human being. Like if you need, you know, the shirt off my back, I'll give it to you. But like when it terms comes for your business and your clients, you want to protect that exclusivity. Mm-hmm. Like much like yourself, I have an onboarding process where, uh, my coach calls them PETAs. Um, it's a, it's, it's a military term. It's called pain in the ass. And you don't want to have these PETAs come into your business. You want to have people that you like, and you're, you're, you're dating them as much as they're dating you. So yes, you want to get new clients, but you want to bring in the right clients. And I think that that's a huge, huge, uh, separation between good to great. Like if you're going to be a good business or a great business, you really have to know what you want and you have to stay true to those guns. So I could, I could add into that for, for the entrepreneurs listening in here, I struggled with finding my ideal client for a while because I was like, I want to serve anyone and everyone. Yep. But the problem is that everyone wants to serve anyone and everyone. And if you only serve a general term like that, people don't find you to be their fit. Right. Uh, I was just at business mastery in, Tony's event and just real quick, uh, Bill Gross speaking. Bill Gross, I don't recognize his name, but this guy's one of the most successful people in the world because he's started and sold over seven billion dollar companies. Wow. This guy is and he's just an innovator beyond belief. And what he was saying is one of his software companies, he was the one that would make the the learning. He made softwares, everything as you know today with um with learning and he made Google basically, you know? So this guy, so what he was saying is that he would make these learning softwares for these kids and it wasn't doing right because it was for, he was joking around thinking it would be better. He was like for ages four to 90 or four to 108, whatever the case is. But the thing is his clients didn't think that it was made for them so they wouldn't buy it. So he had to re uh, configure that and then that's when he made those games where it's like this is kindergartners and then first grade second grade third so if you were a kindergarten and no one no one first wanted to uh, uh you know, invest in him because they're like no one's gonna buy it. only kindergartners will buy it and it's not for a big population but the thing you know, he eventually found out and when they invested is that every single person that was in kindergarten would have that game because it was made specifically for them. then when they go to that's smart. It made one huge grades. Now everyone can go first grade and then second. So that's the same thing as when you find your ideal clients, people are going to be like, this is my guy or this is my woman because I know that's what they target to. When he's making content, he's literally talking about to my fears, my needs, and tell them me what I want before I even get in there. Instead of just making general stuff of like, hey, do you want to get a six pack? This is what you got to do to do. But since I take the traveling entrepreneurs, it's like, hey, I understand how when you're on the road five you know four times out of the month it's hard to know what to eat you can't bring meal preps on the road i know that's a struggle so this is what you do you know this is how you fix that this is how you get into the 20 minutes now that travel entrepreneur is like this guy knows about me and they're going to buy from me because i actually tailored them. so that's my little tip on that i've struggled with ideal clients we still work with other people outside the, the traveling entrepreneur but when you find your ideal client, you know exactly what you're thinking of. And the best way I've heard of it is, is when you could think of what they're thinking about and put it to them in the way that's like you're getting into their head, then it's game over. Because now they're like, they, they look at that and like, how does this guy know about me? And that's how you make the difference in getting a sale instead of in general. It's hard at first to figure out, but the more you learn about your clients and ask questions or ask people that are in that niche, the easier it is to be able to serve them and overall be able to sell at the end of the day, bring the results that you are promising to bring, which is how you bring massive value. Back. So. That's incredible. And, and, and for those that are listening and watching, um, it's for me, that's what separated what I was doing before and it helped me evolve. And that's part of my company has evolved together. 46 and two is the next step in evolution where we become uh, unity consciousness connected and, and we just evolve and we do better because we're with each other, so to speak. And so, finding that target market. And one of the easier ways to do it, and you alluded to it, um, is go after the people that you want to work with and ask them questions, like specific targeted questions. This is something I did to find my, what we call an avatar, right? Or a target market. Um, find out, you know, let's say I want to work with Jake, you know, what's Jake's biggest fear about financial planning? What has you know, experience has been like all these specific targeted questions to find the emotion behind his experience. And then you just give that back to your people that you're talking on social media or websites, whatever it might be. So in that same vein, um, I want to be the first to say, thank you so much. You've done an amazing job. And I think your story is incredible. Um, you've been able to shape 
your yourself, your mindset, your your whole life, the way that you want to work towards this always growing and, and adapting. And it transcends to your clients too. And your clients have these huge physical and mental wins. They see these things happening. So um, in terms of a go home message, I know you've shared a lot. So if there's anything you want to share in terms of a go home message for uh, people that are listening, watching uh, your clients, potential clients, and then also you mentioned it, but if you want to touch one more time, how they can get in touch with you, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. This has been amazing. Um, I hope one of these messages, you don't have to take everything home, but if one thing I shared today can resonate with you, that makes me happy. And my go away message since I, you know, preach and, and, and practice health and success coaching is that your health is your wealth. And I wanted to bring that back up on what Jesse was saying is that I've seen too many people and I've heard too many stories of, you know what, they make the wealth, but now they're around their fifties and they just have these morbidities that they cannot control, right? That they, they, they thought that the wealth will be enough, but now they're like, I can't even be out with my kids. You know, I'm too lazy or I, I don't have the knees to support myself, to run around with them. All these things. And this is where you understand your ideal client on the words they use. And I understand that truly because I talk to these people. And what I'm trying to say is that now is the time, you know, they say, what better time than now is to start now. And you think about it, you're like, it's right freaking now, <laughs> you know, there's no other way to do it because you, if you say you'll do it when you get the money, first of all, when you make the gold money you make with million dollars, whatever, you're going to want to make 10 million because you're going to compare yeah. to those people. So there's never that fulfillment with just getting to that goal. But when you make the goals of how you want to be fulfilled and living in daily living, where it's not so much, I want to make a million dollars, but I want to be financially free and healthy beyond belief. Now, what are those steps you're going to take? And that's where you're going to be like, I need to start having, you know, my, my health taken care of. I need to start having, hiring a coach or going on my own or whatever the case is. But what I will say, or like you said, plug what I do is with a busy entrepreneur, especially a traveling one, when that mind space is taken up of what to worry about for working out, am I doing enough? Am I, am I doing what's going to get me results? Am I eating the right food? Am I eating too much? Too much? All that stuff, only taking up decisions, which causes decision fatigue. There's a reason why Steve Jobs and all of them, they wear the same clothes every single day because they don't want to start the day off figuring out what clothes they're going to wear. It's the same thing with that. Even if you have this experience, but you're not noticing the results, it's because you're not making a priority. That's why we do the hard work for you, and you go and actually accelerate because now all that mental space that you're not worrying about, oh, because you're have everything on our app we're telling you exactly what to do you go and kill it and now you're actually succeeding making more money and being more financially free so that's where you can find me on jay cabron on instagram or facebook that's j-a-k-e-h-a-v-r-o-n shoot me a message if you want to apply right now you can apply i'll see that but shoot me a message ask questions i'm here to help you i'm actually able to give back feedback because I'm not that type of person. It's like, Oh, I don't want to talk to my DMS. No, I love my, I love my clients. I love my people that follow me. And if you have your own social media, you should be doing the same. Don't think that, you know, like you're too big or whatnot. You're always connected. Those are the people that are making you successful. So I love to work with you. I love to help you and you more about your story. So but Jesse, I appreciate you having me on here. It's been truly amazing. Dude, the pleasure has been mine and I can't wait to run it back in the future. We'll talk more about health, wellness, fitness, get a little nerdy on it. Cause I, I love that type of stuff. And it's, it's completely enhanced my business being healthy, uh, has lead to being wealthy, led to being wealthy. And, and the, the time that you spend with people that matter in your life, friends, family, the ones that you, you can make that more impactful. And so the biggest thing for me is making sure that I'm able to chase my grandkids around when they're older, I can, I can be involved. And so people like you surround yourself with this guy. You want to have wise stewards of different people in your life, fitness, finance. Like you want to surround yourself with people that are going to bring you up and that you can help bring up as well. So check out Jake on all of his handles. I'll make sure to put him in the show notes. He's the amazing, the powerful, the strong Jake Havron. I'm Jesse T. Nice. Check us out next week on our newest episode of the Jesse T Show.